Hey everyone, Andy back again with a comparison video in Compact PA Systems. Uh, with our overwhelming reception that we got from our unboxing video of the newly released JBL EN1 Compact, we got a lot of requests for a bit of a comparison with the tried and true Bose S1 Pro. So we're going to take a look at both of them, go through the feature set, have a bit of a listen at the end, and see what's new and see what the two have in common. So first of all, let's have a look at the form factor. Both very compact. The JBL's a little, little larger, maybe about 15, 20% bigger than the S1 here. Um, but you know, very, you know, you can move them around a lot, really nice and sort of compact and easy to sort of get around. We're gonna have a look at the S1 first. Everyone's put it more familiar with this product. So let's take a look. Really nice uh, front panel. Um, with the logo actually being able to be rotated around. And there's a nice nifty reason for that. We'll show you later. Round to the side, we've got our controls. So it's a really nice and straightforward layout. We've got two inputs up the top, which are combo uh, quarter inch and XLR connections. And we've got an aux connection. So a three channel mixer all up and a Bluetooth button as well. Then a little further below, we've got the line out, so you can connect a couple together. USB port for servicing and updating. Uh, IEC or jug connection, so you can either use it via mains or to charge the battery. Very, very handy. And our on-off switch. When at the bottom position, you are got it charging. In the middle is off and up the top is on. Very, very handy, very straightforward. So for the first two inputs, we've got three controls here, three rotary controls, one for reverb, the second for bass, and the last for treble. Then below that, we've got a three position switch between off, an instrument, ideally for a guitar, and then for a microphone, which uh, all have the tone match feature. So they're sort of EQ'd um, accordingly, depending on what you have that on. So that's for the first two channels. And then for the aux, uh, no reverb or EQ on that, so you can either just plug in via 3.5 millimeter connection, uh, hardwired, or you can pair via Bluetooth. So you can have those running all simultaneously. Really cool. Uh, around at the side, we've got our volume control for each of our three channels. Nice and easy, very straightforward. And when we have this powered on, we'll, uh, if we've got incoming signal, we've got the LED there to let us know what's going on. Around the bottom, We've got a pole mount, so you can actually put this uh, onto a speaker pole if you need to mount it like that. We've got our battery life info for those of you that need to know. And to access the battery itself, uh, just need a Phillips head screwdriver to, to pop the lid off that and Bob's your uncle. Around the side, we've got a mounting position here. So we've got some nice sort of rubber pads. So, you know, for your auctioneer or you know, sort of corporate event, you're probably going to have it up like this. But if you are perhaps a busking or performing musician, or having it, you know, around the campfire or something like that, uh, having it mounted on the side is great. And there's different EQ adjustments for both of those, so really nifty. And up the top, we've got a very convenient handle. So that's sort of a wrap for the S1. It's really nice and compact, really easy to use, full feature set three-channel mixer, uh, a nice uh, grill at the front. And also, when we're mounting it like this, we've got our bow sign at the front. Very nice. Let's take a look at the Eon One Compact. So as I described before, we've got a slightly larger form factor, but still very nice and light. Not a particularly strong dude, but this is uh, you know, quite manageable. Round the back. We've got our connections, so from the top, our power button, always very handy. Combo XLR and quarter inch connections for our first two channels. Our third channel is a dedicated line in for instruments, so that's actually for high Z, dedicated for, um, for instruments such as guitars, basses. And then we've got a 3.5 aux in, which is also Bluetooth compatible. Down below that, we've got a pass-through for connecting to another speaker and our headphone output as well. And then we've got two USB ports. So you can actually charge your mobile devices um, 
And a very nifty feature with this is they're actually able to uh, power nine volts uh, to a wireless system, for example. So you could have a handheld system or a uh, battery pack if you're wanting to you know, be running up and down the beach playing guitar uh, with a wireless system. So that's really cool. You can run that completely uh, you know, power free, running off the battery itself. Very cool. IEC down the bottom for charging or running off mains. And then right at the very back, we've got our battery compartment. So this is a, a toolless um, operation. So we've got a, just a very simple screw here, which we can unravel and then pop the back off. And here's our battery. So you could, if you wanted to, you know, take this away for a, for a big weekend and get the maximum sort of output, then you could stock up on a couple of these extra batteries and replace them as needed. Very nice and easy. So we'll pop that back on there and we're good to go. So moving around to the side, this is where our sort of mixer control uh, sits here. So I'm just gonna power this guy on here because we've got some pretty flash LEDs going on. Lights up like a Christmas tree. So we've got our master volume control and each of these uh, controls here have an endless rotary encoder. So that's giving you an indication of your level, which is really, really great, especially in low lit environments. And then we've got our gain uh, control here. Second one down is our treble control. Very nice and easy. Our bass down the bottom and our reverb below it there. And so also we've got our individual channels. So we can either select each of them so as you select each channel, you'll notice how the different colors change. So that's giving you an indication as to how you've got your level set. And all of the four channels do feature uh, EQ and reverb, including the Bluetooth channel, which is pretty nifty. When we have them all selected, these all become our individual gain controls for our um, individual channels. So that just is a really clear indicator. So if you need to quickly go and adjust your gain on the fly without having to go through endless selections, that's a really great feature. Second button down, we've got our mic and line selection. So for our first two channels, if you've got a line source input, such as a keyboard or other such instrument, you can plug that in. Or if you've got a microphone, you select it as such. Below that, we've got phantom power for the first two channels again. So if you're using a condenser microphone for more sensitivity or lapels for you know, presentations, that sort of thing, or a headset for um, gym instructors, for example, uh, that's a great feature there. Or you can run an active DI on that as well. And then the button below that is our ducking feature, which I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Um, it's a really, really powerful feature um, for a lot of applications. So if, for example, if you're a gym instructor with you know, using this, pumping lots of, uh, lots of music out to your, to your class, but then you need to be uh, doing instructions over the top of that, then as soon as that mic level is uh, detected on the unit, then the, the music automatically ducks down. Really, really cool feature. Down the bottom, lastly, is that Bluetooth button, which is very simple, I think we've all paired to a Bluetooth speaker once in our lives at least. So that's it for the side panel. Really, really nice and easy, lots going on. And there's also a uh, further control with this as well uh, via the Eon Compact Connect app, which unfolds a lot more power with uh, more effects, more EQ, um, and you're actually able to connect up to four of these units via Bluetooth simultaneously. Very, very cool. And you can be streaming music simultaneously uh, whilst using that. So they've really packed a lot into, um, into this JBL Hive, which is great. Down the bottom, I've got our pole mounting, nice and centered, so it's very secure if you're mounting it on a speaker pole. And what have we got up the top here? So this looks, this is actually for uh, an iPad, an iPad uh, or mobile sort of holder. So if you're wanting to be able to just slot that in to be able to make quick selections, it's great. Nice handy um, handle there, a handy handle, very, very good. And round the side, much like the S1 Pro as well, we've got these uh, rubber feet, so you can mount it on the side. And the ultimate test, does it do the logo switch? Yes, it does. Beautiful. 
Cool. Now that we've run through the features of both these speakers, we're going to take a listen to both. Now that we've had a listen to these both, don't forget all the applications that both of these speakers are appropriate for. Buskers and street musicians, either a soloist, a duo, or even a trio, you could, you've got enough connectivity with both. Public speakers such as celebrants, uh, gym instructors, auctioneers, uh, corporate presentations, also appropriate for DJs and general at home use, or you can take them out camping or take them to the beach. In summary, the Bose S1, it's been on the market for a while, solid reputation, immediate features, three channel mixer, nice compact PA system. The JBL EM1 Compact, newer to the market, few more features, some more connectivity, larger mixer, slightly larger form factor. It's hard to split the two, but for me, the JBL with its extra features, connectivity, app, and more SPL, edges ahead of the two. Thanks for watching and for more information, check the links below. See you next time. Okay.